in kids and stuff. So when you make it into this world, you better be grateful. Now I know that's gonna hit a lot of people when I talk about abortion. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a half of a chicken and we're gonna cut it up. Let's turn it over on the back side, all right? And what you wanna do, you wanna find the grain where you have your breasts and your thigh come together. You wanna score right there. All right. And then we're gonna separate our white meat from our dark meat. So there we have one piece. Then here we have our thigh. What you wanna do is you wanna find where the, the, the leg and the thigh connects. And you wanna cut right in that joint right there. Cause we're breaking this chicken down. My knife is not sharp because I don't want to cut my fingers off. <laughs> All right, so there we have a perfect leg and a thigh. We're going to trim these up and wash them in a few. Now we're going to go in to get our wing off. I like to get the wing off with a little bit of the breast meat. So hence why I cut my wing like that. And then for the breast, I like to cut the breast in two because we like to have even pieces, all right? So we get our breast into two pieces. So we're gonna finish trim these up off camera, wash them, and then we'll be right back. All right, it's time to wash our chicken. We have our piece of chicken in the water. We're gonna add some vinegar. We're just going to rinse our chicken. You want to make sure that you rub your meat like that and try to get rid of all the excess. You know, there's fat and stuff under the skin. You want to make sure you wash under the skin of the meat. Trim the extra fat. Scrape those uh, feathers. There's nothing worse than eating chicken that still has feathers. Some of them have the yellow spots up here. You got to scrape it back with your knife. Especially chicken thighs. I won't go out and eat it because a lot of people won't clean the, the dirty stuff from out of there. You gotta scrape it out and rinse it thoroughly. You gotta lift that skin, rinse it. You have a lot of people leave that extra fat because it says good for flavor. No, get rid of that. So we're gonna rinse our chicken and we're gonna go over and season. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have um, some chicken. Uh, we cut up all the pieces. I had a clip earlier that I showed you how to do all of this. And I was just at, <clears throat> it sounded horrible. I had to scratch it. So we already put our season on there. But right here we have a mixture of garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, cayenne pepper, badia, complete seasoned, jerk seasoned, all those flavors. So just use your favorite spices from your spice cabinet and just liberally coat your meat. And then you get in there and you rub it up, okay? Make sure you wash your hand after every time you touch meat. So let me rinse my hand. And then, when I'm cooking, I just experiment all the time, unless I'm making like a recipe that I've made before. But right here, we have some leftover um, mango salsa. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this in our blender, and uh, we're gonna puree it with some garlic, scallion, thyme, um, habaneros and a little bit of sugar and vinegar and we're gonna make a nice glaze for a chicken because this chicken is gonna be baked so it's gonna be nice and tender so get excited get excited we gotta cook it up cook it up chop it up cook it up chop it up hey and we're also gonna cook this with some Jamaican festival festival is a combination of Similar to hush puppies, as you call it in America. So it's a mixture of flour, cornmeal, baking powder, sugar, all those flavors. So guys, stick with me because this is going to be delicious. We're going to be making our sauce for our chicken. So in our blender right here, we have our mango salsa, some scallion, thyme, garlic, two tablespoons of sugar, one whole habanero. 
Uh, we added two tablespoons of our chipotle lemon marinade that you saw we made the other day. And then we're going to add a pinch of salt. And then we added two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar. So we're going to puree this all together and we'll be right Honestly, back. Honestly, this sauce smells so good and it's so balanced. Mmm. Guys, I'm excited to taste this on top of the chicken. Oh my goodness. All right, so our chicken are all lined out on our rack. And we put foil paper underneath for it to just have an easy... For it to be easy cleanup. And what you want to do with that mango salsa sauce that we made want to coat our chicken because we definitely want to get that mango flavor into our chicken so we're going to coat that we're preheating our oven at 400 degrees and we're going to put our chicken in these should cook for about 45 minutes to an hour or until done all right so i'll see you guys in a few we're going to make our jamaican festival in here we have one cup of flour, all-purpose flour, half a cup of cornmeal, just a few gratings of nutmeg, uh, three teaspoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoon of baking powder, and that's about it. So we're gonna combine all of this together. All right and we did sift our flour and cornmeal through a strainer all right so we combine everything so that we're going to add two tablespoons of room temperature butter we're going to add a splash of vanilla extract so we're gonna go ahead and combine this off camera and then we'll be right so back. we're back, everything is all combined. Now we're gonna be making our dough. So you just wanna add water a small amount at a time. And you just wanna knead until you create a nice dough. So I'll be back when the dough is completed. All right, so we used about a half a half a cup of water or less to make our festival dough. Now it's nice <coughs> and just right. Still has that bounce to it. So what we do when we're making our festival now, we separate our dough these are going to rise because of the baking powder. So this recipe make about eight or nine festivals. So we're just breaking them apart. And we're going to fry them on medium low heat. So this is the part that you need to get. You just want to put it in the middle of your hands and roll it like this. Rolly, rolly, rolly. And then you have these. All right. Put them in the middle of your hands and roll. Roll. Roll, roll. They can be nice and rustic. You're not trying to make them all beautiful or anything like that. Because once they start rising, they're going to split in the sides. But these are looking good. So we're getting nine festivals from this mix. All right. Mm, mm, mm. I hope these turn out pretty good. Because <laughs> this is a recipe that I saw and I modified. All right. Just look at how beautiful the color is on our chicken already. So these chicken been in the oven for the last about 20 minutes. We're going to flip them over. And we're going to glaze the other side. And once it hits about 45 minutes um, or close to an hour, and they're almost done, 
then we're going to put it on broil. So I want to go in and glaze the other side. Right now we have our oil heating on the stove. We're eating some corn oil to fry up our festivals. Ooh, mango chicken and Jamaican festival. Now you tell me what better combination can you find? Oh, wow. Ooh, sauce. You hear me love say, I got the sauce. Well, she didn't say that. <laughs> I got sauce. Smack delicious. Mm. But you know what? I got the mango sauce. Mango delicious. <laughs> All right, so we're going to glaze these on the other side and we're going to stick them back in the oven for another 20 25 minutes and we'll see how far we are with the cooking process. If we're almost done, we'll do another glaze and we'll put it on broil. All right, so our oil is heated. It's on medium low heat. Now we're gonna add in our festivals. You hear that sizzle? Because of the sugar that's in the festival, you don't wanna have this on super high heat because they're gonna burn and then your festivals are not gonna be cooked through. So these should fry for about six minutes. So we're gonna add them all in. I hope I'm not overcrowding it, but it will work. So I'll see you guys in just a few. I'm honestly not gonna lie. These smell really good. Oh my goodness. And I pride myself on telling the truth in my videos. So if it's not good, I'm gonna tell you, but these smell really good. And I can tell that they're gonna be nice and fluffy and just the right texture. I think I overcrowded the pot, but you know what? It happens. You wanna cook them until they're nice and golden brown. All right, so some of our festivals are ready to come out. <coughs> they're perfectly cooked. Look at that, they're nice and tender. You can tell that they're done. And you're gonna put these on paper towel. Mm. Just look at that. All right, so our marinade that you saw we made, we're gonna use it to make a sauce. So to that we added one tablespoon of butter, butter. As Miriam says, she put the other in butter. All right, so we added that. We want that to just dissolve in there. Now we have some Malibu passion fruit rum. We're adding about two tablespoons of that. And we're just gonna let this reduce on low heat uh, so that it can do what it do. We can cook out that rum a little bit. So we're gonna let this reduce until it's nice and thick for maybe about five to 10 minutes. So we're gonna have a nice passion fruit mango rum sauce, all right? Look at our chicken, looking delicious. Our sauce that we made, we're gonna go over the top. Now this has, you know, rum and everything like that. It's not time to broil yet because we're not quite done. We're gonna let this go back in the oven for another 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna glaze it once again and put it on broil. But just look how magical that looks. Whew. We're on our final glaze on our chicken, and we're gonna broil this for about two to three minutes. So I'll see you guys in the mukbang. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, the long-awaited Jamaican Festival Day. <laughs> we also paired that with some mango, rum, chicken. Mm, 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 mm. Are you hungry? And then we also have some mango rum sauce. We have a, a few topics that we're going to flip over because you know that's how we do it over here. But let's pray that I'm going to give you a close up of this food. We're going to get that thumbnail in and we're just going to get it started. Most righteous and eternal fathers that come before their presence. We hope that you bless this food, bless the hands that prepare it. Let it be of nourishment to my body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So look, we're going to give you a close up. There's your festival. There's a chicken. Oof. There's a sauce. 
All right, so we want to get a good thumbnail. Let's get the water out of the shot. Let's do it with the sauce to the front. Alright. It's always awkward getting my thumbnails right. Alright, we gotta dig in. We must get something from that. Alright, so our topic today is going to be um, do you ever let someone determine or change your ways to match theirs? Now, we're going to talk about that. You're going to truly understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, let's give you a piece of this festival. Take a bite. All right, you're going to listen to this. Mm. Mm. So good. You are nice. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh. Mm. Not too spicy. It's just right. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Mm. This is finger licking good. All right. So, as it relates to the topic now, if by heart you are a loving, genuine person, and someone come with you with bad energy. Um, they don't show love. They're not supportive. Um, all those stuff. Do you continue being the great person that you are? And continue to be supportive. Continue to be kind. Continue to do all those great things. Or do you transform to their um, personality to match them? Well, this is my opinion. If you can conform to someone else's personality and how they behave around you, then that's really who you are too. Because generally, if you are a kind and loving person, then no matter what, you wouldn't be able to be bended into transforming into what the other person give you. You're going to show that person that, you know what, I'm a good person at heart, and no matter what you're going to do to me, I'm not going to do that back to you. If it's getting too much, then obviously you're going to separate yourself from that person because the energy just ain't meshing with yours and you don't want to pick up that bad energy. But, you know, if someone can transform to match someone else's personality, I feel like that's genu genuinely who you are. Do you guys agree or you disagree? Let me know down in the comment section below. That was just my little two cents on that. And then we're going to talk about... Um, is it okay to still support your parents when in need, even when they weren't there for you? Now, this is a deep topic. Um, I can't relate to this because I have supportive parents. Um, I hope I didn't touch anybody's corn, as we say in Jamaica. But if you have personal experience, share that down below. Um, we're definitely going to be talking about that a little bit longer than the previous topic. So let's continue to dig into this fully. But yeah. Jamaican festival, the real deal. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
All right, we're going on a chicken wing right now. Dip it up in the sauce. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This mango sauce. Mm. So my reason for this topic was um, solely because I was watching Love and Hip Hop Miami, and I saw Amara La ne <coughs> I'm sorry, Amara La Negra. Um, her and her mom was fighting about the situation because her dad was never there for her, and now he needs help. And she was genuinely saying that she can spend five thousand on a Gucci, so she thinks she can help her dad. And her mom was very stringent about that. She was like, you know, I don't think you should help him because. Uh, when I was struggling with you, he was nowhere to be found. And quite often you see those situations where parents abandon their kids or they could do more and they didn't do as much as they should. And they're just being an egg donor, a sperm donor, or whatever that situation is. And they just have kids just to have kids. And they don't really put the necessary time in to nurture their kids. And then... They get older and then they expect that the child should still come and give them something based on that they're a parent, they brought the child into the world. But my opinion on that is very strong. I mean, I have a double opinion. I can agree with Amara because if you have a parent, you don't want to see them struggling no matter if they didn't do nothing for you because you're always grateful that they brought you into this world, whether or not they take the best care of you. So I have mixed opinions on this. Um, if I had a parent that treat me horribly though, no matter what you need, I ain't going to do nothing for you because you treat me like nothing. So now it's your time to feel like nothing. Um, so I would love your opinions in the comment section because I love to engage with my audience. Um, let's dig into this food a little bit more. We'll chat about this because I'm very passionate about these topics that I speak about. Um, but... <sighs> Let's dip up in this sauce, yeah, man. Dip up in. I'm back. I'm back. As per usual, I always get a phone call. I think I normally have to put my phone on airplane mode next time. But let's dip up back in the sauce, yeah, man. Cause the sauce is the boss, as our Miriam would say. <laughs> hey, just look at that. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah. This situation, now the spice is starting to hit me. This situation is not just for parents, it's just people on a whole. Like when you have people in your lives, you have to cherish them, you have to nourish them, you have to show them right energy because there is a day going to come that you're going to need the nurturing from them too. But people nowadays, they ain't thinking about you and your best interests. They're thinking about how can they take, take, take. And I can tell you, ain't nobody going to take nothing from me because I'm smart enough to know when you're here to take. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. I won't give you a piece of that breast there because me already bite back up this other. Mm -mm. Mm. Now this is what chicken should taste like. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. But yeah, you have a lot of people in this world who are just here for you when you're on the up. Now once you hit the ground, them gone. 
Mm. This is so good. But yeah, I, I truly applaud Amara La Negra for thinking that, you know, uh, he's still my dad. I still feel like I need to support him if I can spend that much money on designer clothing. So I say applaud to Amara. I would probably do the same thing too because I would feel some type of way because I, I'm always grateful to my parents for bringing me into this world because there's so many people out here aborting kids and stuff so when you make it into this world you better be grateful now I know that's gonna hit a lot of people to when they talk about abortion I'm gonna go into no detail do whatever you want to do but when you come into this world you gotta be grateful mm. You know when you come over here, I'm all, all over the place with my topics. <laughs> mm. I forget to give you a bite of this chicken breast. Why? I'm going to show you without the sauce. When I make chicken breast, always so moist. But at the end of the day, our great God going to lead us in the right direction. So if you think that's the best way to go about it, he's going to lead you. So you just got to let the Lord lead you because he's never going to lead you astray. Mm. But I'm telling you, this food is off the chain. This is my first time making festival from scratch. And this is delicious. The chicken is amazing. Mm. Shout out to um, Eating with Kay Cotton. She just got monetized recently. Awesome lady. She gave me the best name. She said, I'm her Jamaican singing chef. Can I hit a note? Maybe. Mm. All right, so I want to say shout out to two um, growing content creators, Spicy Spivey. She has two challenges out. She have a no-bake uh, banana bread challenge, and she also have dress your Sunday best challenge. Um, that challenge is a no-hands challenge, so you need two scoops of ice cream, four toppings, but you got to put spoon in each one of the toppings and you got to use your, your no hands um, to put the toppings on your ice cream to create your sundae. And then you can eat it using your hands, but to put the toppings on, no hands. So guys, please go over there and support her. I normally don't do a lot of challenges. I do one in very random because I want to focus on the food and the mukbang and less challenges, but I support everybody. And then we have Eating with Flipper Tea. Um, she have a tiny spoon challenge, uh, which is really fun. I think you gotta eat a bowl of cereal with tiny spoon. Um, that's a time challenge too, I think. So guys, please go check out those two amazing content creators. If I remember, I'll make sure that I put their links down in the description. So take a look out for that. Um, this was a delicious um, recipe and mukbang. And I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Maybe by the time this video comes out, we'll be at 900 family members. So if we're not there yet, help me get to 900. If we're there, then help me get to 1,000. Guys, I want to say thank you all so much for watching. If you like the content, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell 
so that you don't miss a brand new upload. And as I always say, if you've been here, you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell your coworker, don't be selfish because they want to be a part of the family and join this amazing personality. <laughs> so I want to say thank you guys so much. Love you all and peace.